Hello, everyone. Let's continue our course. Now, we will step into the third subsection. In this section, we will talk about virtual network for virtualization, and I will introduce some virtual network architecture to you. Okay, let's go. This picture shows mainstream virtual network architecture. No matter which vendor's virtualization product, they all need to solve a problem, that is, how the virtual machine communicates with the outside world through the physical network. There are three common ways. The first one is bridge. The second one is net. And the third is through a virtual switch. And then, the virtual switch is connected to the physical network card. In fact, these three methods belong to the bridge, but they are a little different from each other. First of all, let's take a look at the difference between bridge and net. Both bridge and net directly connect the virtual network card to the physical network card, but they have some differences when forwarding data. When the virtual machine contact the outside world, even including physical machines, or when they broadcast to the outside world, they will write their own IP address as a source address. Why do this? Because this makes sure that if one person gets this message, he will know the source of the message. The biggest difference between bridge and the net is that there is some difference in the source address. Bridge is source address is a packet sent by virtual machine, and its source address is not modified. Looking at this diagram, the source address is always red with no modification, but in NAS, its source address should be notified. Why NAS is special? Because the full name of NAS is called Network Address Translation. So, the source address should be replaced. This is the biggest difference between bridge and NAT. Next, let's take a look at the virtual switch. Let's take the OpenV switch as an example to introduce the virtual switch. Virtual switch is actually a more advanced mode or bridge, which can be proved by the four features of the OpenV switch. The first is security, the second is monitoring, and the third is QoS. And the fourth is automated control. Since bridge and net can already be implemented the function of communication with each other between virtual machines, why do many vendors have to make their own virtual switches, such as Cisco's NASA's 1000V, OpenV switch, and Huawei's DVS? First reason is to facilitate management and monitoring. By using the monitoring virtual switch, it is convenient for the administrator to monitor the network status, data traffic in the entire cloud environment. Second, it speed up packet forwarding and addressing. Compared to bridge, it is based on MAC address to forward data. However, the virtual switch applies a caching mechanism to speed up the forwarding of data packets. Third, just like the software definition network, the nature of ICDN is a separation of control and data. So control plane and data plane should be separated. Only the virtual switch can separate the control plane and the data plane. Fourth, the virtual switch support more protocol. Another point is that virtual switch are suitable for more scenarios. Furthermore, it is suitable for them, KVM, virtual box, VMware, and many other hypervisors. Virtual switches are divided into standard virtual switches and the distributed virtual switches. The biggest difference is that standard virtualized switches run on only one host machine, while distributed virtual switches are distributed across multiple host machines. What is the benefit of a distributed virtual switch? That is, multiple host machines share one virtual switch. You only need to modify the configuration of this virtual switch. And the configuration of other all host machines will be updated. 
For distributed virtual switch, it is a necessary condition for virtual machine to do hot migration. Huawei only support distributed switches in virtualization solution. VMware virtualization solution supports both standard virtual switches and distributed virtual switches. In this video, I introduce mainstream virtual network architecture and some technologies of virtual network to you. And in next video, I will introduce network features of Huawei virtualization products. See you in next video. Bye.